Hello Internet, my name is Ace and today I wanted to kind of cover something that's quite important. Uh, some people don't think about this stuff maybe as much as they should, some people do, it doesn't really matter. It's basically talking about values and how they affect the composition really. To me values are far more important than colour, they're far more important than um, anything else in the actual painting stage. Um, I, I still think a solid sketch should be um, should be number one than, than probably values. So what are values? Values are basically how light or dark something is. So if we look down here at the bottom, I've created a, a bit of a value chart, kind of value range. So on the left hand side we have white going all the way to a black. And that's values really. It's just how black or how white something is. Now how can we get that to influence the uh, our work? So we can accent things, we can play things down, we can we can do many things with values. So if you look at this sketch here, which is obviously of um, uh, what's it called? Not Sheldon, uh, Leonard from The Big Bang Theory, on um, on the sofa playing a video game. So the background is very busy around where his head is and that's not not very uh, it's, it's, yeah, as you can see I've, I've left box away from around his head so there is like a little bit of space but it's generally best to leave room around your character but obviously in their living room they have this bookcase behind that's full of books <clears throat> So I needed to add that in there, and like I said, I made the book sparse around his, his head so so we can uh, have a little bit of room to breathe. But even if those books were full, we could still make it so things so so he he stood out because we don't we want him to stand out. He's the most important part of this of this uh, piece. So what we can do is we can have and again I'm making up the lighting and, and everything in this piece this is just going to be basically from the head but before we worry about lighting we need to assign values to to each of the of the uh, elements so let's just pick some sorry pressing the wrong button here let's just pick some values from this chart so we need something that's pretty dark and we need something else for the shadow work. So this is, is going to be more of the detailed stuff, but I'm just going to get a, like a, a range of values, and um, it's quite arbitrary. I'm not I'm not particularly picking anything in any particular order. And what we can do to really make things stand out, which is very important in the piece, is this in the background. Okay, so we can make this light and we can make Leonard dark or the other way around. Now, this is going to create a separation between the background and the foreground. And that's very, very, very beneficial. And because it, it helps things stand out. Like, if I create something now in white and I put a circle of black on there, that black really stands out. If I put this second value, which is not white, next to it, it doesn't stand out as much. You can obviously still see it, but the black stands out far more. Now when we're talking about something like um, a figure or a person, that obviously needs to be the focal point. Or, well, not always, definitely not always, but in this piece it certainly does. So let's try and create, create that separation. So uh, let's go kind of standard here. So we're going to do Leonard's skin as like a a mid turn. The reason why, by the way, I've done the background as as like a, a mid turn grey. Let me show you that grey. I don't know why it worked clear. Oh, it's because I've got it locked. There we go. If we have a look, it's 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 mid turn but up slightly. And um, that's just because if you've got something white like that, is like this here, this skin tone I've just put on looks very, very dark when you've you've got in a white. But if you've got like a mid tone uh, background, then it kind of looks more natural. It's easier to judge things when you've not got this stark back, white background. Right. So we're just going for a random mid turn. Let's get the same for his hands in there. 
he's holding a PlayStation controller, so it's going to be very black. And we're not worrying about um, how accurate, like the the pitch, the uh, painting is at the moment. I'm literally just scribbling blocks. So let's make his suit quite dark, so that the skin uh, stands out like so. And this is obviously not going to be the final. Like, obviously, there's different reds and blues, and reds quite a quite a dark valued color to start with. So that's going to stand out slightly more. But this is just kind of uh, a basis to work from. Now the sofa is going to be quite dark. It's a brown sofa. Browns tend towards the dark. So let's just scribble this in. Like so. Again, we're not really worrying about staying within the lines or anything like that. This is just so we can get like a visual grasp of what we're, what we're going to do. Because if you're if you're strict in your well not strict, well yeah I guess strict if you're thorough I guess in your planning you're more likely going to come out with a better image than if you just go in it blind. Right so we've got this, then I want this to stand out, this Sheldon spot kind of thing. So we'll do that. Because there's not a lot on the right hand side of the piece, so there's going to be a lot of focus on the left. So we need something on the right to kind of balance that out slightly. Right now, the background. So let's go in quite dark with this. And as you can see, if we go in dark, keep all these things quite dark, the sofa is not going to stand out because let's lighten that sofa. See, then we come up with a problem. So if we lighten the sofa, we have to light, lighten the suit if we want it to stand out, which we do. Then we need to lighten the skin tone, but that's no problem. This looks really light at the moment, but it's all to do with um, it's all to do with what's it to do with? It's all to do with relationships. Okay, so if something is super white on something super dark, then it's going to really stand out. But what we can do is we we can tend more towards the light with his skin tone and darken up that suit a little bit more and it's not gonna it's not gonna seem weird when it's finished okay so that is looking to me a lot more accessible and like I say there's this well I don't know how many different shares like thousands millions who knows of, of values and we we just want to be strict and stick to like five or six when we're starting with how many have we got we've got six just stick with five or six to at the beginning, just to really hone in on what is important and what's not important. Now, another thing that I find incredibly important with making things stand out and things receding to the background is the actual value range. Okay, so this is obviously it's going to feel a bit more like nighttimey because we've got quite a dark background, but that's fine. So we've got this kind of thing like that. Now, you can already see that uh, Leonard, especially his face, really stands out. And uh, maybe darken that slightly. It's standing out a little too much. So that's really standing out from, from the piece. And, th and that's great. That's what we were looking for. Now, what would I go for for the floor? I'll just darken that up very slightly to the value that we had in, rather than the initial. Uh, thing. Paper colour, I guess. Right, so, um, how to make things, like I say, have a wide or limited value range to make them stand out or recede. Right, so, with the background, if we've got something, let's say, let's have a look at this one for now. So, if we've got, we're at this value in the background because we're doing different lighting or whatever. We've got this this value just for this bookcase, let's say. So when we're going in and creating a the lighting and actual rendering, the kind of thing, we'd maybe go, right, the shadows are going to be really dark under here, and like so. And uh, let's really make these 
the backs of this, like really dark because they're, they're really far in the background. Well, we're giving like quite a lot of attention and dynamic range to this background, so it's, it's, it's going to steal your kind of your vision from it. So what we need to do is we need to say, right, this is our uh, value, which is what around in here somewhere, even lighter than that. Okay, so let me just create a little palette up here. So we've got this. Now here is our dark, the, the next dark we've been using. Okay, so let's pull that in a little. So it's this dark, or we could even pull it even more in. And then look, we've got these three values here. And then let's go for one slightly lighter. We can maybe go slightly darker with that. There we go. So as you can see here, we've got this value range like this. This is going to be our darkest dark, and this is going to be our lightest light. Now, if you, if we take a look at the actual value range that thing that we've just created is like within here whereas we've got this full value range to pick from but if if this background has this slight value range like this and the things in front have more of this kind of value range generally things are not objects are not going to have a, a full value range but say if we've got this kind of value range then there's going to be more detail and interest, a lot of the detail and interest comes the mid 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 turns, the light turns. And um, that's going to be accented a lot because there's going to be a lot more to look at, a lot of d dynamic range. Whereas in the background, we've just got this kind of thing going on here. Okay, so let's just put that into practice for you. So this is our kind of like, uh, sorry, I forgot that we created another layer. So this is going to be our mid-turn here that this is going to live on. Now, if we pick... But let's let's have one more. So we've got two kind of darks. This is... Is this our mid that we just used? Yeah. So we've got two darks. Let's, let's pick one slightly lighter. So let's go like this. So we've got a bit more interest in the lights because the lights are where the magic happens. In fact, I won't go as bright because we really want to keep that value range low. So there you go. You've got one, two, three, four, five different things. Right, so we've got a um, uh, local color, so local value. So local value is if there was no light or if there was just perfect, the actual color that something is without light affecting it, whether it be light, dark light, or you can't have dark light. What the hell am I talking about? Shadows or... or bright light or something like that right okay so then let's go in with some kind of shadowing in here like so so we've got all this the bottom of that's probably going to be in slightly more shadow you might get a little bit of the light in there probably not actually so I'm not giving much thought into this at the moment I'm just uh, that would be even darker probably in there, like so. So as you can see, I'm just, just giving a little bit of attention to this. So then we've got the darkest dark that we're putting in now. I'm not doing this in any particular order. People like to put the... I like to go darks, then darkest dark, then add the lights. But um, Then we've got the the lighter things, so let's make the, the front of this a little bit lighter, because it's getting the, the light from up top, let's say, but then as it's going down, it's getting less light. So as you can see in here, let's just add some of these books. We don't want to give too much like attention to these books. I mean, I've written names on those just to mess around, but this stuff's going to be quite, quite blurry. You're not really going to be able to see any of it. There's going to be not much value range in there. So we've got this. Um, yeah, so that's kind of like the value range that we would do for the bookcase back there. Okay, so then let's expand that value range out a little more. So as you can see, on this this one on the left, this is like a... It is definitely a, a darker study, like a nighttime study, but we're just arbitrarily picking things at the moment where 
I'm basically telling you how I'm thinking rather than actual actually doing these studies because I would need to be thinking about it and, and all this this kind of stuff. I'll I'll think about one at the bottom uh, when we're done. Right, so we've got that limited value range in there. So as you can tell already, even though nothing else is shaded, those values, this bookcase, doesn't really look as busy anymore because we've not got much values in there. So let's pick a local... <coughs> excuse me, sorry. <coughs> something in my throat. Sorry about that. Uh, let's pick a local colour for his skin turn. So let's come slightly brighter. Let's create another palette. So let's edge towards the light on the skin tone. So this is going to be like the local color here. And then we can go lighter again. So as you can see already, these lights, if I scribble this, these colors over this background, you can see that they're far brighter than, than um, the bookcase. And they stand out. Right, so there's like our lights. Let's maybe make that the local color. Then we'll add a couple of darks. So I'd just like to have like five, maybe five values like this. Now, as you can see, we didn't go the full value range. That's not black and that's not white. Um, you can if you really want uh, to really compress, uh, have like a lot of contrast and stuff like that. So let's go in. Let's kind of add in some shadow. I, I know we're not talking about details, but I do really need a smaller brush than that. Let's uh, turn the brush size down a little bit. Right, okay. So we've got a shadow in there, like this. I'm not, I've not really picked a light size or anything like that. This is just me demonstrating the actual uh, values and stuff. How to think rather than the, what I'm actually going to do. Okay, so let's stick some lighter parts in there. Where his chin would have get the light. He'd get some light on his nose, like so. His glasses would pick up some of the light. Like this gonna have a shine on his forehead. So as you can see, we're already pulling together this that's kind of looking uh, a little bit more like uh, a value study. Like I say, I'm just scribbling these really quick. This is not gonna be, this is not anything like I would uh, paint it. It's not going to look very good, but as you can see, with there being a, a lot more dynamic range in that, I'll just stick a couple of highlights, like so, some of the glasses, and then obviously we've got his hair, which is quite dark, so let's stick that in, like so, let's add some dark, darkest darks, and let's add a little bit of highlight on the top somewhere. It's hitting some light. So as you can see, that's kind of standing out a little bit more. Now, I probably should have gone with my first instinct to really uh, change the the actual core value of, of the background with the core value of his face. I can make the background lighter, I can make it darker. In fact, what I'll do is I'll demo that for you now. So if we... This is just so you can see how different things become just by darkening one, how it can affect the look of something else. So let's just quickly grab this around here, like so. It's not the neatest thing in the world, but it doesn't really matter. So I should probably, let me put that on a new layer. And then let's go to hue and saturation. Okay, so I can lighten this and darken this like so. Now, if we darken this, like to that's about the value we had on the picture on the left, then his face really starts to stand out. And same if we lighten this stuff, I mean, you can go all the way white and that's ridiculous, but if we lighten it to like this point, his face now looks darker. Whereas here, his face looks, looks 
like kind of lighter. So let's darken this and let's lighten his face a little bit. His hair probably could do to stay dark, but it doesn't really matter. Oh, what am I doing? Sorry about this. In fact, let's let's keep his hair fairly dark if we're lightening this. Like so. Sorry, I'm not very accurate. I don't really use Photoshop. I don't even know why I used it for this, to be honest. Right, okay, so hue and saturation. Now let's lighten this. There we go. Now look at this. His face is really standing out from the background now. Now that background's still got the same value range, it's just darker, but it's still got the compressed value range. And those books are you're not even looking at those books now. I mean, you probably are now because I'm talking about the books. Your eyes are looking at the books. But if you look at this picture now, your head goes, your eyes look straight at that, at his face. Now, we can go out and carry on building the rest of that image with that approach where things in the background have, or things in the foreground. Let's stick a, um, let me just create a new layer. And let's grab this. Let's stick in a, like the back of a TV. Like let's say he's looking, he's playing the video game, he's looking at the TV. Now, for this, let me, actually, let's say it's going to be this dark. Let's scribble that in, like so. Now, if, if the, even though this is in the foreground, we want to deter from looking at that somewhat. So let me just put that above the sketch so you can't see the feet underneath. So if we had a limited value range in there, so we've got this, and let's just stick a little bit darker. So this, this is our value range that we've got. Let's say there's a little bit of focus here. There's like a, I don't know, some box. And obviously, I'm adding a bit too much focus to it because of the brush lines, but you just even them out a little bit. We've got something like that. Your eye is still drawn to here because this is the the biggest point of contrast. This is dark. This is light. So this is how your eye is looking at it. Whereas if we take it back to how it was originally, this is an example of bad values uh, planning because his face is a similar value range to the background. As soon as we darken it, things become a little bit better. But as soon as we lighten his face as well, things become way, way, way better. Okay, so this is what we need to be thinking about constantly. Now, I'm quite happy with the value, the original, this value study we did over here. I kind of like the fact that that's what I'd maybe do is lighten the, uh, this section. So let, let's just go about that. Let's ignore ignore all this down here, and let's let's just kind of take this top one to more of a full value study. So let's get rid of all this stuff. Now, where's the car color for this? It's like here. I think this could do to be lighter. Just slightly lighter. In fact, what I'll do is I'll pick... Is this the... Oh yeah, because we actually we darkened everything, didn't we? So Let me pick the the lightest part of this was in fact here, so let's just go slightly lighter than the light, lightest part that we had. There we go, and that just separates those two planes as well. And like I said earlier, the bit on the right needs a bit of... Um, it needs to be evened out slightly. If, if this... the image is very left heavy at the moment. So if we can add a little bit of interest to that right hand side, then that's that's gonna be it's can't be anything but a good thing. So let's have a limited value range. So we've got this. Let's have a dark and an even darker. So we've got the mid turn, which was what mid turn was here. So let's go slightly lighter. 
and again. So we've got a very limited range here. Very limited. So let's go and make our brush a little bit smaller. So we've got this line in here. Then the door frame. Is this the door frame? This is the door frame. Let's just make this randomly slightly darker. We've got that for the mid-turn. Let's stick in here. Have some light coming down. Now this isn't a light stu well it probably should have we should probably should have done like a light study uh, alongside this. We've got a darker panel in the board, that kind of thing. But this is, is more to do with how th the values are going to be arranged. You can do the lights at a later time, it's it's not gonna be a problem. Right, okay, so then we've pulled a little bit more weight back to that right hand side. Now Let's talk about his. Let's talk about the outfit. So, because he's uh, uh, quite a focus, we want his face to stand out more from. So, his face is this value here. So, we want the the core value of the actual top to be something. We can maybe go slightly darker, but we've got to remember about that sofa. That sofa is going to be dark as well. So I'm just looking at this for a second now. Let's go slightly darker. Right, that feels a little bit better to me. Let's just colour it all in for now. I, I love, my favourite part of this is that you can see the socks, you can see that this is just a cheap suit with one of those um, like fixed shoes that you clip over your socks, I love that. That's my favourite part of the, of the whole drawing, most people probably won't notice that. So let's add in his skin tone there, and it's not going to be as bright as the brightest parts here, because although we do want to add focus into this so you can see that he's playing a video game, we don't want to be overly... Um, overly generous with that stuff right so let me just get rid of this these palettes now we don't need these was this the one for his oh we we lightened his skin tone anyway let's is that about the same as that no it's a bit darker okay let's get rid of all this and then let's let's create like a, a palette here for these turns. So we've got this here which is going to be the core kind of blue colour. So we want quite a big dynamic range but not as big as we had for his face. So like so and like here. So this is still a fairly big dynamic range. It's not... Uh, so we've got <coughs> sorry, three for the light and two for the dark. It's nowhere near as much as, as the first. That's fine. Right, so reds tend to look darker. So let's add that as like a core colour. That part on there. Obviously we have the controller. And that's going to be the darkest dark. So we want that to really stand out in his hands. Like so. I, th I feel like just adding that darkness in there really made that stand out. Then we have red for the boots. The fake boots. Like so. Now, you can... That's starting to look pretty good. So let's go in. Probably going to be quite a dark in here because you've got red, but then you've got the... Like a lot of shadow things going on. Like this. It's going to be shadow under the arm. There will probably be a little bit of light on here, depending where the light is, of course. Then let's go real dark under here. And again, we're just, we're really not worrying about a final finished piece here. I mean, I would leave my value stage maybe a little bit more detailed than this and slightly less detailed than this. Right, so here we have the the um, stick some highlights on there. 
probably one that be on there a little bit. Let's stick some darks under here. I mean, this this is kind of like I say, it's very it's very rough. We're not we're not creating a, a finished piece here. So we've we've got dynamic range, and it still feels like it's a part of his body. Uh, part of his face. His face is obviously a lot lighter, but we we can go in and, and darken it slightly uh, in the shadows. But his face is still standing out. His face is the important thing, and his his hands holding the remote very important. And these are the things that are, are standing out at the moment. These are the that's what we're looking for. Right. So let's put him on the sofa now. The sofa wants to be more towards this color here like look this stands out but if you're putting this here this doesn't stand out because it's against that um against that uh bookcase so let's go lighter but not too light because we want him to him to still be lighter than this than this uh sofa so this is feeling okay as a car car color to me local value now there's that like throw rug th that's above him and that's again just a little bit interest but I think I think they, well I don't think uh, when I was watching the show they do have that in the, on the show so there we go Let's stick all this in here scribble it we won't worry about, worry about all that stuff on the right hand side the Rubik's Cube and stuff I can do that later it's not as interesting but it is, as before, it is adding weight to the right-hand side of the of the picture. Right, so, let's have a look. That feels okay to me. So, let's create a value chart of that, a palette for us. So, this is our local color. Now, we want to be slightly less of a value range. I feel like I'm repeating myself quite a lot, but that's uh, that's not a bad thing. And slightly uh, lighter. Because although this is on the same plane, like uh, in perspective as Leonard, the... Um, what am I trying to say? Although it's on the same plane as Leonard, we we want Leonard to stand out more. So we're giving Leonard a lot more of a dynamic value range than we're giving this surfer. And we're not we're not just giving a very slight value range like like we did back here with the box. No no no. We're going uh we're giving it a definite value range in there. So there we go. So we've got some kind of shadows in there. Now this is a leather sofa, I believe. So it's it's going to have some some kind of highlights and stuff in there. But let's do this. And like I said, this video is very long, and I feel like I'm repeating myself, but it it helps to to see this stuff. This stuff is very important to your pictures. It's as important almost as having a good sketch in my opinion more important than the colors this stuff miles more important than the colors colors you can if your values are right you can do basically anything with the colors it won't matter and a bit of light up here it's gonna have a bit of cast shadow here a little bit under there probably probably not whatever then let's go and add some highlights. Now this is leather, so it's going to hit. And there's probably going to be a slight highlight on here somewhere. Definitely one up top. Definitely one along this ridge and like this. So there we go. So now we have the sofa very crudely done, but it's, uh, it, like I say, it's, it's not important at this stage to worry about rendering. So we've got the sofa, we've got him set on the sofa, and he feels like he's got more dynamic range than the sofa. I could maybe add a bit more dynamic range into the suit, to be honest. Could have pushed that a little bit further. Um, so let's worry about the actual floor. Now what's going on with the floor? 
I can't actually picture what colour in my head their floor is. Is it wood or is it blue? I have wood in my head. <laughs> I have blue, sorry. And I have blue in my head. Let's just add a quick value to this table. Just so it's kind of got a bit of value. So yeah, Rubik's Cube, all that kind of rubbish. Right, so... Again, I can't, I just I can't remember what color the the floor is, but keeping it light does that work, or would it look better slightly darker? Let's see. So we do have a lot of dark things touching the floor, apart from his feet, which are kind of like a mid turn. Where are his feet at? Oh, his feet are still fairly dark. Let's let's put the. Put the floor around here, maybe. How is that looking? Obviously, there'll be shadows under the under the sofa, under the feet, so that will break up the uh, the objects and make them feel like they're attached with the shadows and stuff. When we do that stuff, now that background bit there could do to be to be darker I feel like because it's 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 going towards the background now we really don't want much dynamic range in the obviously there's there's gonna be a shadow under here for that but we don't want a huge amount of dynamic range in the floor just a bit like so like that kind of thing And then let's just add this kind of shadows under here for stuff under the feet. Now, looking at that now, his face is standing out slightly too much. So it may be beneficial for us to just back that down just a tad. There, just that, if we take that preview off, that feels slightly forced. Whereas that, just a very slight value change, let's have a look. Bring it in even more. Look, look at that, very slight value change. But that feels a little too much, that feels right to me. And it stands out enough from the background to have like a scene. So, as you can see, we kind of stuck to the initial thought process on the left hand side somewhat I mean we had a lighter floor we had a darker sofa darker background that kind of thing now I probably would darken that background on the right hand side slightly more but aside from that I, I feel like we've got something that I'd be pretty happy to st start painting so what I will do is I will I'm going to be doing every every, uh, every element of this this thing is going to be I'm going to record record me doing values and going to record me doing color. Now I I think there's only ever one painting I've ever done where I've done it all in values first and then gone forward and added color. But people kind of find that a little bit easier to grasp and you're kind of getting a lot more control over your values there. You're thinking about your values and values are important. So what I'll maybe do is I'll I'll do it that way. So if we just darken that slightly, look, that, that's made all the difference. I know no pixels were selected. Right, okay, so there we go. So that's, I mean, I've not done the throw rug and everything like that, but it really doesn't matter. You understand what I'm thinking about when I'm thinking about values and thinking about how to um yeah just ha how to approach values to to create something that is cohesive even though there's a lot of things going on that that background you're not looking at those books anymore again you are now because i just told you to but those books are they're not on your mind they're there and they're there for interest and stuff if you want to explore the painting but as soon as you look at that painting your eyes get drawn to leonard's face then you may be kind of in your right-hand uh, peripheral vision. You see that sign. You look. Oh, it's Sheldon Spot. They're the two funny parts. It's a geeky nerd dressed as a superhero trying to save the world via a video game. 
that's where the gag is. And then the second secondary gag is on the right hand side, which is um, Sheldon Spa. Okay, which is like an in joke for uh, people who watch the Big Bang Theory. Right, okay, so I hope this has helped. If it's helped at all, please tickle the old down below. Click like, click subscribe, comment. Uh, if I, you didn't understand anything you want me to talk about it more, just let me know down uh, down there, downstairs. And um, and yeah, that that the next phase will be maybe to just go in and just start painting. Well, that's that's probably what we're going to do next. Well sometimes I do like colour studies and stuff like that but seeing as though we're we're just working from values we're going to work in bl fully in black and white and then we're going to go two colours I'll maybe just go jump straight into the painting so that's that's going to be next it's going to be values and that's going to obviously be sped up because it's going to be hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours and hours of uh, me painting so I'll speed that up but I'll talk I'll fully uh, narrate it right so until next time have an awesome, awesome, awesome week, day, month, whatever, and I shall see you next time. So take care. Bye-bye.